This is the story of a family who promises God that they're going to finish off an evil force in the world. And until they finish it off, they will not enter heaven. Their bloodline is, however, about to end, and they still haven't finished off the evil. They're joined by a man named Van Helsing. Let's see how they go about it. Welcome to Monster Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2004 action monster film, Van Helsing. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The movie starts in 1987 Transylvania. Dr. Victor Frankenstein, aided by his assistant Igor and Count Dracula, creates a monster. The villagers are angry at Frankenstein as they storm the castle. The mob is disgusted with Dr. Frank, as he reanimated the corpses of their fellow villagers. Frankenstein picks up a sword to kill Dracula. When he moves forward, Dracula intentionally impales himself on the sword to prove that he cannot be killed because he is already dead. Dracula then grabs Frankenstein and kills him. Frankenstein's monster rises and knocks Dracula into the fireplace. The monster carries his creator's body and goes to the windmill. The people outside the castle spot the monster and chase it to the windmill. When the monster shows up in front of the mob, they get scared for a moment. Dracula, alongside his three vampires, descends on the villagers and they run away. The windmill, on the other hand, collapses and the monster falls into the burning flames. It's now believed that the monster is dead. A year later, a monster hunter, Gabriel Van Helsing, travels to Notre Dame de Paris. While he's on the road, he comes across a dead body of a woman. He gets a feeling that the killer is still there and as he looks around, he spots a humanoid creature. The killer right away tries to flee the scene as he gets into a cathedral. Van Helsing follows the killer into the cathedral, and there he finds a creature who turns out to be Mr. Hyde. He is a murderer, and Van Helsing has been looking for him on behalf of an organization. The organization he works for is known as Knights of the Holy Order. Mr. Hyde attacks Van Helsing, sending him flying and trapping him inside a bell. Van Helsing then escapes by cutting through the floorboard and retaliates as he cuts off Mr. Hyde's arm. Mr. Hyde is really powerful as he grabs Van Helsing and throws him off the top of the Notre Dame Cathedral. Van Helsing shoots Hyde in the chest and tries to pull him off the roof. Hyde tries to fight back but ends up slipping and he turns into Dr. Jekyll as he falls and finally dies. The police arrive there, find his corpse and right away conclude that Van Helsing is a murderer. Van Helsing, on the other hand, goes to Vatican City and enters a church to confess his sins. There, we get to know from Cardinal Jeanette that Van Helsing suffers from memory loss, and their theory is that it's because of the sins he committed in the past. Van Helsing suffers from memory loss, and he's told that if he wants to get his memory back, he's going to have to continue working and keep killing the monsters for Knights of the Holy Order. Helsing pursues evil on behalf of the Holy Order, which has protected mankind from time immemorial. Van Helsing, who remembers nothing before he was found crawling up the steps of a church, hopes to earn pardon for his forgotten sins and regain his memory. Jeanette now goes on to give Helsing a new mission. He tells him that he's going to go to Romania and eliminate Count Dracula. Valerius the Elder was a knight who promised God 450 years ago that his family is not going to enter heaven until they finish off Dracula. Van Helsing is now tasked with traveling to Transylvania. He is told that he has to destroy Dracula and protect Anna and Velkin, the last of an ancient Romanian family, the Valerius. Velkin went missing 12 months ago, so if the aforementioned names are also killed before they kill Dracula, their whole family is going to spend eternity in purgatory. Jeanette then shows Helsing an old scroll that was given to the church 400 years ago. The scroll bears the same sign as Helsing's ring. The cardinal then goes on to tell Helsing that he might find some answers about his past in Transylvania. Then we see that Friar Karl, who is a weapon inventor, helps Helsing get armored for his journey as he gives him holy water, a silver stake, a crucifix, and a crossbow. Van Helsing now starts off his journey to Transylvania. In Transylvania, Velkin tries to trap one of Dracula's werewolves as he uses him as bait. The winch that he uses to escape the werewolves gets stuck, and to his good luck, his sister, Princess Anna, gets there to save him. The werewolf finally gets trapped as it tries to attack the princess. Just as Velkin is about to shoot the creature, 
His gun slips off his hand, and he loses the weapon with which he intended to kill the werewolf. The cage that's holding the werewolf gets broken as it crashes to the ground, and the creature escapes and chases the princess into the woods. She soon finds herself between a cliff and the werewolf. Just as it's about to leap at her, Velkin appears and shoots the werewolf. He, however, falls off the cliff into the water with the werewolf as Anna looks on. She is shocked at the loss of her brother. On the other hand, Van Helsing arrives in Transylvania. They do not receive a very warm welcome, as the people of the village do not seem very friendly. Anna then appears and demands they give up their weapons. Helsing, however, does not feel like giving up his weapons, and she orders her people to kill him. Just then, Dracula's brides appear to attack them. They come flying, and one of the brides right away picks up Anna, and as she is about to fly away with the princess, Helsing grabs onto Anna's feet, forcing the vampire to let go of Anna as she cannot carry the weight of two people. They both drop to the ground, and Anna lands on top of Helsing. The black-haired vampire then orders the blonde one to kill Helsing. Helsing, however, manages to fend off the vampire, and when the sun comes out, the vampire retreats, or else they would have burned themselves to death. But before they can relax, the sky darkens yet again, and the vampires return to attack. Alira comes flying and grabs Anna. Anna manages to slice off her leg, but she is then tossed to the other vampire who tries to escape with the princess. But Van Helsing shoots the vampire on her ankle and she drops Anna. Anna tries to get into one of the houses in the village, but only to be found by Alira yet again. Van Helsing, on the other hand, gets knocked down and loses his crossbow. The vampires then start to take their human forms and get ready to kill Anna. Van Helsing wakes up. He gets back his crossbow and dips it in the holy water. Helsing shoots one of the brides named Marisha, slaying her in the process. The villagers then gather after the other brides leave. They start to get angry at Helsing for killing the vampire. A gravedigger appears and says that vampires do not usually kill many people, but now they're going to because now they're going to be killing for revenge, not just to survive. Anna, however, comes forward and says that Van Helsing is the first person to kill a vampire in over a hundred years, and she takes his side, saying he has earned himself a drink. On the other hand, Dracula appears and scolds his two vampire brides for not finishing Anna. He says that he doesn't care about the one that got killed, because he can get another one. He then orders one of his servants, named Dwergi, to travel to Castle Frankenstein to set his plan in motion. Anna, on the other hand, takes Van Helsing to her castle and suggests they go hunting Dracula. When she doesn't listen to reason, Van Helsing knocks her out as he would like to fight in the daylight because they can easily tackle the vampires in the day. In the middle of the night, Anna wakes up and hears a noise. Anna sees bloody paw prints and right away gets her pistol. Before she can find out who's there, a werewolf appears and Anna goes into hiding. She finds her brother, Velkin, standing behind her. He tells her that he's there to tell her Dracula's secret. However, before he can tell her the secret, he starts turning into a werewolf. He then begs Anna to run for her life. Van Helsing gets there and the werewolf escapes through the window. Helsing follows the werewolf and as he's about to take the shot, Anna makes him miss the shot as it's her brother. She then tells Helsing that she's going to turn him back into a human. Back at Frankenstein's castle, Igor and Dracula try to create the doctor's experiment. The werewolf appears and turns back into Velkin. Dracula has thrown a burnt corpse on the floor, and Velkin recognizes the corpse as his missing father. It turns out that his father died during one of Dracula's experiments. Velkin is then tied to a chair as he's going to be his next test subject. Van Helsing and Anna pursue Velkin to Frankenstein's castle. They stumble upon Dracula's plan to duplicate Frankenstein's experiments to give life to thousands of his undead children, using Velkin as a conduit. In the middle of the experiment, hundreds of baby vampires begin to hatch and fly up to meet their mother. Hundreds of them then get out of the castle window to feed on the villagers. Van Helsing starts shooting the vampires with his crossbow, and it doesn't sit well with Dracula. They get into a fight, and Dracula gets stabbed right in the chest by Helsing, but he does not die, and goes on to greet Helsing like he knows him for years, as he calls him Gabriel. Anna, on the other hand, enters the lab to get her brother out of there. She gets attacked by Dwergi, but she manages to fend them off and get to her brother. Dracula, on the other hand, asks Helsing how long it has been since they last met. 300 or 400 years? 
Helsing, however, does not remember meeting him before, and he has no idea why he keeps calling him Gabriel. Anna, on the other hand, tries to save Velkin, but the curse of Werewolf has set in, and he's not the old Prince Velkin anymore. Helsing tries to use a crucifix on Dracula, but it also goes in vain. The vampire brides and their kids, on the other hand, feed on the villagers. The vampire kids then start to explode, and it turns out that Velkin was not the right conduit for the experiments. As Dracula's wives scream, it turns out that his experiment has failed. Dracula turns, and using this opportunity, Helsing gets to Anna. From the castle roof, he uses a hook gun to create a zip line and traverses the chasm with the princess. The werewolf falcon chases them, but the wolf's weight is too much for the cable. It breaks, and the werewolf falls into the water. Anna and Helsing, on the other hand, fall into a cavern. Carl is at Anna's castle, and he discovers a secret painting. As he reads the Latin inscription on the painting, the painting begins to move, and then it transforms into a vampire and a werewolf having a fight. Back in the cave, Anna and Helsing find out that the monster created by Frankenstein has been hiding in there for over a year now. The monster tells them that he is the key to Frankenstein's machine to give life to Dracula's blood. If Dracula finds him, he'll be able to give life to thousands of baby vampires. Anna moves forward to kill the monster, as she doesn't want it to be used by Dracula. But Helsing stops her, saying she cannot kill it because it poses no danger to them. Valken the werewolf has been eavesdropping on their discussion, and he escapes with this new information to Dracula. Van Helsing decides that they're going to take the monster to Rome in order to keep it safe and away from Dracula. While attempting to bring the monster to Rome, Van Helsing and his crew are ambushed by the brides and Valken near Budapest. Verona and Velkin are killed, but Van Helsing is bitten. Alira kidnaps Anna and offers to trade her for the monster at a masquerade ball. Van Helsing locks the monster in a crypt, but the undead retrieve him for Dracula. Van Helsing and Carl rescue Anna and escape from the masquerade guests, revealed to be vampires. At Anna's castle, Carl explains that Dracula is the son of Valerius the Elder. When he was killed in 1462, Dracula made a pact with the devil and lived again. Valerius was told to kill Dracula and gain salvation for his entire family. Unable to kill his son, he imprisoned him in an icy fortress. Carl then adds that he cannot however make sense of one of the paintings because it's missing a piece, a fragment the Cardinal gave Van Helsing. Helsing uses that, it fits the painting, completing it and it opens a path to Dracula's castle. The painting turns into a mirror, and they find out that they're going to have to walk through this mirror-like object. They do so and end up reaching the place where Dracula resides. They find Frankenstein's monster, who reveals that Dracula possesses a cure for lycanthropy, because only a werewolf can kill him. Van Helsing, fighting the curse, sends Anna and Carl to retrieve the cure, killing Igor and Alira in the process. Van Helsing attempts to free the monster, but is struck by lightning bringing Dracula's children to life. Dracula and Van Helsing turn into their bestial forms and battle. Dracula reveals that it was Van Helsing who killed him and offers to restore his memory. Van Helsing refuses and kills Dracula, triggering his brood's deaths. Anna injects the cure as Van Helsing kills her, howling in grief as he reverts to human. Van Helsing and Carl burn Anna's body on a cliff overlooking the sea. The monster departs by raft, and Van Helsing sees Anna's spirit reuniting with her family in heaven. Van Helsing and Carl ride off into the sunset. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.